hello again and welcome to uh watching me do makeup over my shoulder my name's johnny and i've been a makeup artist for over 12 years and this is my part of the internet where I like to share longer clips of work that I've been doing. A lot of you have come over from TikTok and from Instagram and are interested in seeing long form content. And that's obviously what YouTube's good for is for me to be able to slow things down a little bit and to break them down and to show more of the process. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you'll notice that I like to keep clips in in full because I, I feel like that's quite helpful to see, you know, how long something takes to actually blend and apply. And I hope you find this relaxing. So before I waffle on for too long, let's have a talk about what we're doing today. I wanted this look on Bailey to be very soft, very glowy, very dewy. So we're using the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, which a lot of people have issues using. I've had a lot of comments of people asking me to break down an application for that foundation. Now it's a water-based foundation and it's quite a thin consistency so I like to use products underneath it that are thin in consistency and more of a water base as well. So you saw me go in with the MAC Fix Plus and that's like basically water and glycerin and then you saw me go in with the Milk Hydro Group Primer which again is water and glycerin based. Now this foundation like I said it's a light consistency so to get a fuller coverage in this you need about three pumps and to really go in in thin layers. A lot of people are using a buffing brush and buffing this into the skin. And I see a lot of people using like a silicon based primer with this foundation. Now that's kind of a recipe for disaster. Now, before we go too far ahead, I do, I am aware that Francois Nars designed his foundations to be used with fingers and you can absolutely use this with fingers as well. However, I find that this technique works better for me applying it on other people. Um, like I said, it's a thin consistency and it's more of a water base. So what I've done with underneath is use those products to really kind of grip onto this foundation. And then I'm working in small layers. I'm using a brush to apply and then I'm using a, a damp beauty sponge to blend in once I've applied. This is a great way to save product. So you're not using too much product to start with. And it's also a great, great way to build up slowly because we're not going for cakey here. We're going for soft. Because of those gripping primers that we've used underneath the skin, we're not, you'll notice that I'm not doing any kind of buffing. I'm not buffing this into the skin. I'm doing, even with the brush, I'm going in more of a patting motion. Now, if you've seen one of my videos before, you'll know that I like to leave these clips in full. So if you enjoy watching the clips in full, uh, without me doing too many cuts, please make sure that you leave a like and leave me a comment down below so that I know that leaving these clips in full is helpful for you and it's something that you want to continue to see. I'm using a lighter shade of the foundation. The first shade was Punjab and this shade I believe is two shades lighter uh, and I'm using this through the highlight sections and the T-zone to add a little bit more coverage but also to add in more of a natural contour. I do this with most foundations. I'll use you know two to three shades. Now this is a liquid bronzer that I'm actually working on in the lab at the moment. I love liquids because they're much easier to blend and I'm buffing this into my hand first, into a brush, into the bristles, and then I'm gonna go patting it into the skin. Now, I've mentioned this before, I'm not gonna go too far into ingredients on my YouTube channel. The chemistry behind ingredients can go super in depth. So I'm actually gonna release a tutorial focusing on a silicon and water-based emulsion workflow with a workbook and a recipe guide. And it's gonna go in extreme detail on what products are compatible with each other so that you can understand not only what to do, but why you're doing it. I basically wanted to create something that will help a new makeup artist or a seasoned makeup artist have a recipe guide or if you're doing it on yourself of products that work really well together that are compatible and that are not going to give you any hassles when you're creating a long wearing makeup on yourself or on a client so if you're interested in that please give my instagram a follow and it will be getting released in the next couple of weeks let's move across to one of my favorite steps now when you're tan and bronze you really want to make sure that you're using a blush to brighten up the complexion um, there's nothing worse than looking too muddy and this is one of the best ways to do it using a blush that almost looks too light for your skin tone and going in and buffing that through the cheekbones and actually bringing it up high now if you want more of a kind of chubby cheek uh, blushy kind of look you want to bring it into the cheek if you want more of a sculpted look you're going to want to bring it up higher onto the cheek you can see I've mixed a matte blush with a shimmery blush so that I'm actually creating a little bit of a highlight it's not a glittery highlight, it's more of a slight sheen to the cheek. 
and I just think it looks super natural and beautiful. And you'll notice that I'm doing this and I'm blending it into the bronzer as well to create an overall effect of brightening the skin while still keeping it tan. Now I've gone for more of a peachy tone and that's because I want the blush to blend into the skin super well. Because Bailey's skin tone is more on the warm side, I've picked a warm blush. If I wanted the blush to stand out more, what I would use is something more like a peach blush, sorry, not a pink blush, or something more cool toned, and that will stand out more. Now we're going in with um, Touche Clap by YSL. This is the high cover version, because again, I want this skin to look really beautiful. I'd like to match my concealers with the type of foundation that I've done. So this is more of a lightweight, thin foundation. So I wanna use a concealer that is a similar consistency to kind of maintain an overall cohesive look. And you can see how that gives the perfect amount of coverage underneath the eye. Um, it's very soft. And this is the, like I said, the high cover version, which has more coverage than the original Touche Clat. The original one is more of a highlight pen that you can use to kind of bounce up shadows. Whereas this one you, does have enough pigment in it where you can use it to, as you would like a normal concealer. Now we're going in with powder. This is the rose shade of the Givenchy Prism Libre powder. This is super finely milled. And the reason I'm using pink is because pink will allow me to bounce back any bluey, greeny, purple tones in the skin. And it is gonna brighten up. Uh, any of those tones as well. I'm going to leave the rest of this in so you can see how I apply the powder and that's in a pushing motion. I'm using the most of the powder through the T-zone and then what's left, which is a very light amount under the eyes. And I'll see you back in about 30 seconds for the next step. Okay, we're back for blush. Now I'm using a very similar toned blush that we used in the cream version on top um, after we've powdered don't go and try and do this before you've given a light powder to the skin it'll end in disaster and it will cling to any wet patches of skin i wanted to do an extremely simple eye for this look again because this the makeup and the skin i wanted to be very fresh and light i wanted to do a very basic soft glittery glowy eye so we've gone in with this makeup forever uh it's one of their stick eyeshadows and I'm not gonna lie these are actually they're not the easiest to blend and you can see me kind of vigorously going backwards and forwards and I did warm this up on the back of my hand a bit which is super necessary for this particular um, formula however these do last really well on the skin so yes they're harder to blend they don't have enough slip time but when they're on the skin they they stay there they're, they're pretty waterproof Normally I would say that using a cream is easier than using a shadow, but if you're starting out, what I'd recommend using is an eyeliner cold pencil instead of something like this, because that is gonna be a lot easier to blend, uh, but it won't have the same staying power as this. So it's a toss up between the two, but if you're starting out, start with a cold pencil, it's gonna give you much less of a headache than what I'm doing here. And you can see that I'm using this on the outer corner and then also underneath the eye, and this is gonna act as our base for eyeshadow. Now we're going in with the Pat McGrath. This is the Mothership 5 palette. And I'm going in with the bronzy shade over the top to blend out. This is a matte shade and it's softening all of my edges. And I'm bringing this into the inner two thirds of the eye and I'm kind of blending it into the nose as well. I like my contours to go from the bridge of the nose down and kind of blend in seamlessly and be very cohesive. You can see how beautiful this technique works on someone who's got more of a hooded eyelid. It's not overpowering by any stretch of the imagination, but it is really going above the crease when their eye is open so that you can see the shadow. Whereas with Bailey's eyes, if we focused on just the mobile lid, when her eyes were open, we wouldn't be able to see much of the shadow work. So making sure to blend that up to the brow bone. I know it can seem a little bit scary, but once we blend in some shimmers, it'll look really, really beautiful. Now we're gonna go in with a mixture of this champagne gold and also the more bronzy shade, and I'm gonna push this all over the lid. And you can see this is the most simple way to elevate an eyeshadow and make it look amazing. These glitters in the Pat McGrath palette really are 
worth make the palettes worth it for me because I can add these on top of any look and it can really take them from basic to something a lot more interesting I love a a, a, a shimmer that has like a micro glitter in it and you can see how this is playing with the light and kind of dancing in it curling eyelashes especially if you have more of a hooded eyelid curling your lashes is super super important I would actually go to say that if you have more of a hooded lid having your lashes curled and doing an individual lash is probably more important than even eyeshadow I would never put a full strip lash on someone who's got a hooded lid because it's gonna eat up their whole lid and all you're gonna see is a big lash whereas you can see that we can still see that really delicate balance between lash and eyeshadow without overpowering the eye this is the Ofra highlight and we're just adding that on the cheekbones and on the cupid's bow and we're going in with a morphe lip liner again we're going for something quite soft on the i love a juicy glowy nude and that's exactly what we're going to do today now i want to apologize again this is actually a lip that i'm working on that's my my own creation so it's not something that I'm able to list but it's a mixture of a matte lip color mixed with my uh, clear gloss and it's a there but not there you but natural lip it's got a lot of squalene in it so it's super hydrating and there we go that's how I created this soft bronzy look on the beautiful Bailey if you want more of me you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Johnny Thor. All my links will be down below and please leave me a comment on your thoughts and feedback. And if not, I hope to see you next time I upload a YouTube video.